everybody. I said, good morning, everybody. It's a great day. Is it not a beautiful day? Let's just go outside. Y'all want to go outside? Let's just take this keyboard and go out back. It's beautiful out there. Come on, would you stand together with me? Turn around to two or three people. Shake their hands. Come on, move around a little bit. Tell everybody hello. Would you do that? Just tell everybody hello. That's it. Just keep moving around. Moving around. Moving around. Come on, we're going to worship God today. We're going to have a great time glorifying Him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, everybody shout hallelujah. Come on, warm this place up. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you. We give ourselves to you. And we believe that today is going to be a great miracle day as we magnify your holy name. One more time, everybody clap and give God glory. Somebody come on, lift up a shout of glory in this place. Huh? I said lift up a shout of glory in this place. Huh? If you know you have the victory, lift up a shout of glory. Hallelujah! Come on, make it strong this morning. Hey! Woo! Let the weak say I am strong. <laughs> Let the poor say I am rich. <laughs> Lift your hands high. Open your mouth strong. We bless you, God. We love you, we Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. How we love your name, Jesus.
get ready, get ready. Fall on me. Anointing. Fall on me. Come on, take it, take it now, take it now. Anointing. Anointing. Fall. Fall on me. Come on, lift it up. Let's just pray for that right now. If anybody is here that you need, yes. you have a spirit of infirmity in your body, you need a divine healing, I'm just going to ask you, everybody, just to raise your hand as we pray right now. Just believe God to touch you. Now, maybe it's a child that's in the nursery or not here, a family member not here. There's no restraints to healing. There's no, no limitation in space in healing. God is everywhere. That's it. So let's take agreement right now. Now remember, as we're praying, we're receiving it by faith. Wow. Wow, wow. We're not having to talk God into something. You did not have to talk God into saving you. You don't have to talk God into healing you. That's it. It's all done. In fact, if you don't normally come on Wednesday night at our at our church campus, you need to come this Wednesday night at 6.30 because I'm going to minister on how to receive by faith. What do I have to do? It's already done. What do I have to do? So, Heavenly Father, right now, we speak divine healing in this room. The same power that raised you up, the same power that healed the stripes on your back, the same power that restored the organs of your body that had been torn up, the same power that caused your, 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 your feet that were nailed, your hands that were nailed, 
that caused them in a miraculous, instantaneous way to be supernaturally healed so that when they saw you a couple days later, you had no infection, you had not been through therapy, you had not had a tetanus shot, you had not had an antibiotic, but you were touched by the hand of God. And I believe that by those stripes, and you took it, you received it. You took it and you received it. In the same way, we receive it. And that right now, every cancer is being dematerialized from every physical body. Every blood infection, every ligament that needs to be restored, all the muscular skeletal system, respiratory system, every part of us, God, right now is being completely healed because you are glorified in healing is ours on earth. We command the spirit of infirmity to leave every physical body right now. Physical body be healed in the name of Jesus. Now everybody that wants to receive that, you just begin to praise God right now. Just give Him praise. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Come on, lift the praise up a little bit. Come on, before I do anything else, the blood will never lose its power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's by His blood. It's by His stripes. It's in His name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. I need the microphone on uh, right here. My microphone. Throw the other one down.
don't you turn around to somebody and say, I believe every word of that. Go ahead and just shake somebody's hands. I believe every word of that. Every word of that. If you're saved and you know it, shout a great big amen. Well, you, you did that good, didn't you? Amen. If you didn't understand me, if you're on your way to heaven, not hell, say yes. Yes! Everybody say heaven yes. Heaven yes! Hell no. Hell no. Oh! Some of you enjoyed that way too much. You can be seated if you like. Amen, Patrick. Wow, the presence of God is so great in here. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I love his blood. I'm so thankful for the blood. Glory to God. Have our church host families, while you're coming, I'm just going to keep rejoicing because you know what? God kept us all week, didn't he? And, and with Easter being last Sunday, wow, it should be even more intense in here today. Amen. Because God is so good. He reveals himself from glory to glory. I just love what he's doing in this house today. If this is one of your first times with us, we just want to welcome you. These guys are making their way down the aisle. Raise your hand, flag them down. They've got a gift for you. You want to get this bread today? It's so delicious. It's awesome. It's homemade just for you guys. And so make sure that you flag them down and fill out the card they're going to give to you. We want to get to know you on a first name basis and pray over your family. So fill that out and turn it in when the offering passes by and, and we'll just get acquainted. Amen. Church, make everybody feel glad that they're here today. Amen. You know, there's so many great things happen here at the Church Live right here in this spot and also on the TCA campus. And as a matter of fact, you just need to get on the face, uh, Facebook, on our website, and check out everything that's going on because you don't want to miss anything. And this Tuesday night, the ladies are having an incredible Bible study. You know what? If it's your first night, if, it's, if you've been there several times, you need to be here and celebrate with us. It's been a great study. It's called, You're Gonna Be Okay. If you believe that today, can I hear an amen? <laughs> you're going to be okay. And so we're just going to get into the Word of God on Tuesday night at 630 at the, at the TCA campus in the Fellowship Hall. Bring somebody with you. We'd love to have a great time. We always, it's not a thing we take for granted. And I know that uh, Rance says we don't have to do this, but uh, I'm all about giving appreciation and gratitude and and honor and we at no time do we ever want to take for granted during this time of us uh, of rebuilding our auditorium of the Conway Regional Medical Board especially CEO of Conway Health and Fitness Center Rance Bryant for arranging and allowing us to be here um, there's some people had a part of it but uh, this is the man and, and uh, so each week as we come in here, uh, you know, from time to time, I, you, you all are doing such a wonderful job of cleaning up and, and picking up and all that sort of thing. And, and, and I just appreciate that. And I know that you're honoring this house like it's your very own house. And, and, uh, but uh, this is a great facility. Yes. And, and we're able to come in here and, and, and the kids are loving it. And, and, uh, Everybody's in one place. We can park all the cars, and, and it, it's a godsend. And 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 God knew. See, I didn't know this. God knew that when I joined this health facility a few years back, that I'd be worshiping here. Now I I, I usually worship here, but it's kind of quiet. All right. And and God knew that when. We became acquainted with rants. God knew there would be these arrangements. Well, see, I didn't know that. And so God is doing some things in your life right now. You may not fully be aware of what he's doing. Amen. So, and I, I've learned here of late uh, to not uh, uh, overlook the small things. It's beautiful, beautiful. You know, because, because your steps are ordered by God. So, so sometimes we look at the giant leaps, but it's every step that really counts. And, and so I, I just thank God for you, Rance, and, and, and for the entire operation 
uh, of what goes on. And, and uh, you guys are doing such a great job of coming in here and on Saturday nights, helping us when we can on Saturday nights. Sometimes it's going to have to be on a Sunday morning, but, but helping us set up and get ready. It's a big deal. I mean, from the curtains. And I was like last night, well, we don't need the curtains uh, up. We do back there, but underneath the stage. And they're like, oh, no, you taught us we're going to do this right. <laughs> I've learned on setup, just keep my mouth shut. All right? I mean, the guys, they got the lasers out. They got the measuring. Then they got it all down pat. I mean, it just, it's just all so wonderful. The Chi Alpha team coming in here with their technology and, the, and all this. And, 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 um, and Marshall uh, keeping it all together. And, and so, but uh, I said all that to start off with the telling Rance and John and the entire Conway Regional team, a great big appreciation again. Would you do that? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've seen some people pass out here. But last Sunday's the first time I've seen anybody crucified here. All right? And get back up without a medical team coming. Amen. I had a lot of thoughts last Sunday, but I didn't give an opportunity. Y'all didn't give me a chance. Uh, wasn't that the best Easter you ever been to in your life? That was phenomenal. Now, now let me tell you what's happening. is we're, we're still working on some things about being able to stream all the services. But we're right next to the best thing. Uh, right now that camera's rolling. If you go to our website or anybody wants to go to our website, you talk to. All of our podcasts are there. In other words, you can listen to the audio of every service. Okay, that is Sundays for right now. I would tell you right now, Wednesdays are better than Sundays. Uh, everything I preach Wednesday night, I think I preach theology one, two, three, and four uh, all, all Wednesday night. I, I never had so much revelation come to me of how about that come on. when it means that Jesus laid down his life, come on. Satan did not kill him. Come on, come on. He crucified a body, but he didn't kill Jesus. Come on, come on. Yeah. And I could, if I had a little more time, I'd go back and tell you on Wednesday night, Jesus raised himself. <laughs> well, I proved it on Wednesday night. Jesus raised himself, and that power that he used of the Holy Spirit to raise himself is the same power that's in you. That's the reason you're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Wow. So anything you face, you can say, I'm greater than you in the name of Jesus. Wow. Incredible stuff. You should have been there. I know it was raining outside. It was raining on the inside. It was powerful. Anyway, we, we've developed. You can go to the website and listen to that stuff. But also, this week, we started our Church Alive YouTube channel. So what you can do is you can go to YouTube and just put in the Church Alive Conway, Arkansas. Now, you need to put the Conway, Arkansas part because we didn't know that. But there's a couple other places in the nation called Church Alive. They have nothing to do with us. But anyway, they're there. And so right now, the complete Sunday services are posted there, everything. I mean, so you've got the Palm Sunday, Ryan preaching. That's the first day we started. That's there. Last Easter Sunday is completely there. It depends on if I like what I do today, this one will be there. <laughs> well, anyway, and, and, and so, so you can go to YouTube, church. That's exciting. Isn't it great? Give God praise for all the things that are happening here. It's great. So we're progressing as we're going. A lot of people are asking about the building. You know, I get er everywhere I go all through the week, people are saying, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Listen, folks, let me just tell you right now, it it's, it's going to be a few months. You think? Uh, Jesus tore down the temple and rebuilt it in three days. <laughs> but it wasn't a building. Y'all got to get that, all right? That's good. That's good. It wasn't a building. And, and this is a building. And there's some big beams in there that are going to have to be taken down because it's going to, have to be structurally sound. Amen. Because there's a lot of shouting goes on in that place. And that's going to take a while. I mean, they got to get in. And, and uh, you know, right now, uh, maybe, do I, do I have a pick? Did I get one? Uh, uh, we got a pick here of what the building looks like right now. If you'd like to be on the inside of it. And what is happening right now, there's, there's your auditorium right now. And, and so what the deal is, all the carpet's gone, as you can see. The stage is completely gone. And uh, uh, 
all the drywall, all the insulation had to come out. All the drywall and insulation inside that room, those rooms behind it. Uh, I mean, if we had a baptismal today, uh, yeah, there, there's the back of it. I mean, changing rooms would do us no good, would it? Well, anyway, uh, uh, so and the baptistry is still there and all that. But uh, And then he showed you the back side in the hallways. The carpet is gone. The tile has gone in the foyer. The information booth is gone. You can't get any information right now. Uh, that chandelier that Patty wanted to change, it's gone. All right. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's just, you know, and, and uh, the hallways, the, 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 the walls will be there. They'll just be uh, cleaned and repainted. But all throughout the entire building, all the ceiling tile insulation is completely gone. And so, as you can see, it's going to take just a little bit, isn't it? But once those beams get here, okay, it's going to move in a real quick way. All right, so I want you to know. So if you drive by there and you say, well, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. You've been seeing dumpsters go in and out of there. That's what's happening. Getting the old out and getting the new in. You cannot put new wine into an old wine skin. Yeah, somebody help. Yeah. And, and so it's a good thing. It's not a disaster. It's a good thing. Yes, sir. So we're going to get new walls and new carpet. All right? And all kinds of new things. So uh, God's doing a good thing here. Now, in the midst of all that, uh, you, you guys... Uh, your, your faithfulness, your giving is so important because the church goes on. That's right. That's right. Uh, it's, it's funny how the, you know, I've never had the bank call me as much as they do now. <laughs> Are you okay? Is everything okay? <laughs> because every month they like that payment. Can I have a witness here? I mean, I've never had so many bank lunches in my life. All right. And it's, I, I didn't know they loved me so much. All right. But uh, I found out they love us. All right. Uh, and they're excited we're here. And, and now I've had people begin to ask me, rants through the community, are, are y'all there? That's exciting how you're doing that, you know? And that's great, you know? When I come up here and work out, I hadn't been for a week or so, but anyway, when I come up here, sorry about that confession, all right? But when I do, there are people who say, how's it working? Do y'all, how's it set up down there? And I'm always able to say, well, you ought to come. You ought to come, you know? And, and so it's just a wonderful thing. So keep on your social media. Uh, keep keep doing it and, and you know posting things there and 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 today there's going to be a few things come out in the message you're going to want to post take that selfie because it's working people are noticing all around the world literally for what you're doing on Facebook and all those other places so keep doing that open up your emails I give you an email I sent you an email this week I hope you opened it all right and and, and so and, and look at that we'll communicate with you those ways we've got other things we're going to begin to do. And we'll, we'll tell you about that as it goes along. But thank you. you. You can always give online throughout the week at any time. Go to our website. You can give online. And today, here's what I want to launch to you. I, I, I just feel in my spirit. Uh, a man said to me, a brother said to me before the service that April was going to be a, a month of miracles. And I felt in, 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 in my, in my uh, I, I know that they say that April showers bring May flowers. Is that right? But I, I believe April is going to be full of blessings. I, I believe that. I believe I it's going to be supernatural. I receive that. Supernatural. And, and, and so, you know, um, just, just, just let that heart of giving be loosed. And let's just see what God does. Uh, it has become expedient upon us to go ahead and buy some chairs. We're at that point. And uh, basically the chairs are going to be similar to the ones you have. They would be black in color, and, and we can use them a lot of places. We're going to do some outdoor events coming up at the Church Alive on the campus. We're going to need some chairs. And, and so they're about 20 bucks a piece, and uh, that may not include, uh, you know, like the dollies and that sort of thing. But now, you, so we're, we're, going to buy, we're going to buy 300. So you, you can make a choice. You can buy, you can, so then you can give up to 6,000 in this offering. That's right. If you're wondering what my limits are, you can give up to 6000 in this offering. Seven all right. So, so don't, because that's what it's going to cost. So don't limit yourself, all right? And you're, you're saying, well, what's it going to, you, any one person give up to 6000 and, and so then you say, well, if you, we got the, what are we going to do with the other? Don't worry. We got a lot of needs. All right. And, and, and so uh, you can buy enough for your family or, or you or the people you want to bring or all of them. Whatever the Spirit of God does on your heart, okay? 
And, and so uh, let's just start today by giving offerings for the chairs. And uh, let's see what God does. Amen? And let's let him do it through you. Now, now here's the deal, though. I, I, I'm not going to order them until we get the money. Amen. All right? And, and, and so I understand by faith you give, and by faith then we'll buy because we got the money. How many know what I'm talking about, all right? Okay. And, and so until then, we got to rent these. Okay. And, and, and so... Uh, let, let's just do that today, all right? So Amen. above your tithe and above your offerings, you're going to get tax money back probably. And I'm going to believe you're going to get more back than you've ever gotten back. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. So here we go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you're doing. And you're doing more than what we've ever asked. You're doing so much, we wouldn't know how to ask for that. What you're doing, we wouldn't know how to ask for. And so right now, we put claim on the harvest. We put claim on supernatural divine intervention. We put claim that the word will not return void because it's your word. And so we put your word in our finances. I pray you would increase, increase every one of these people in a magnificent way, more than what they've ever dreamed. And I believe that today the chairs will be there. I believe that today that every need of the, of the ministry center will be there. We're going to be able to do more than what we've ever even dreamed. Now's the time of acceleration. We move on that. We stand on that in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen and give God glory. Amen. Would you do it? Come on. Give him praise. I think we ought to celebrate. Come on. Come on. Just everybody celebrate. Everybody celebrate. We, we, come on, stand for about 30 seconds and, and celebrate with me because God is good. Come on, everybody. Just clap and give him praises and hallelujahs because he's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. Amen. If you, if you would like to give by debit card or credit card, um, Gail is out in the entry area where we have good reception. You're welcome to do that. If you want to go ahead and give online, you're able to do that too. All right, um, uh, I, I've got a lot to do here, so um, let's all see what time it is, all right? Let's, uh, let's get on with this. We're going to have a good time with this. You're going to learn a lot. Let's just start by taking your Bibles, and uh, why don't you just go to Luke, the fifth chapter. Let's just start out right there. Um, I've um, kind of titled this Seeking Surge, Go Deep. Now, the reason I've done that, is it okay with the camera? I'm just going to kind of step over here because I can see better in the light, okay? You guys that okay? Um, you know, before the fire, we were in this series on, on, on Seeking Surge, and, and I, we're not done with that. And, and I believe that um, the Lord wants us to take that to another level. And so I, I want to, th this could almost be called vision casting today, but, but I want to give you some things that I think will help you with where we're going. And it's not only where the, I don't want you to see this today before we start this, of, of where the church is going, because you're the church. Come on, everybody say, I'm the church. All right? And, and, and so um, I want you to see this, apply every part of this to your life. Every part of this. So the first thing I'd like for you to establish in everybody's lives right now, number one is this, is that we are living post-resurrection. That's good. That's good. Now I want you to be aware of that and spiritually know that. Now, a lot of people want, want to get into conversation about uh, end-time events. And so am I pre-trib, mid-trib? Now, what does that mean? Because some of you have no idea what that means, and that's okay. You're learning. Is that means pre-tribulation, uh, uh, mid-tribulation. What, what does that mean? The Bible states, we just sang it earlier, there was so much great doctrine in that first song. Well, it was both of them, but, but the first song is that you are the only God that is a redeemer. Now, if you will study the religions of the world, you will find that none other, 
None other religion claims to free you from everything you've done wrong. And no other religion, secondly, now this is deep, no other religion claims to transform your nature. I want you to get this. Because you were born naturally of the old Adam, the old man. But by the blood of Jesus, of which you heard in the second song, great doctrine song, is that blood transforms you into the likeness of God. Amen. And, and, and so and other religions will claim that, um, that uh, you, you'll die and become another creature or you'll go somewhere. They don't really know where. They don't know what it's going to be. Um, you know, you may come back as something else, but can't promise that. And, 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 but, but no other one. Listen, Muhammad doesn't claim to come back. Buddha doesn't claim to come back. I want you to see there's other things I could give you. But Jesus is the only one that after he died showed himself alive. The Bible says is that after he was risen, it says in the book of Acts, that he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. In fact, there were more ways that he showed himself than what the, actually the scriptures record. We have one, the disciples are together together. They think he's dead. They don't know what's going to happen. And Jesus appears in the room. In fact, the doors were shut. They were locked. I call it Star Trek. He just, bam, there I am. All right, so he shows already that he has the power to do things that, that are crazy good. Okay? And then after that, he shows himself to other people. Uh, even when you have the even scriptures, I don't want to get too much because I want to get to where I want to go here, is, is that even when Jesus was raised, there were, other, there were dead people that had been dead for a long time who got up out of their grave and walked into the city. You need to read your scripture, all right? And, and, and so all of that is, is, is showing you what's going to happen to a believer in the end time. The scripture says that the Lord's going to come back. You say, well, how's he going to come back? And, and I didn't intend to say all this much, but you, some of you need, need to draw on this. Jesus, after he was resurrected, uh, he, we call it the ascension. He was out there with the disciples. He began just like, right, he just began to raise up. His body. He didn't parachute down. He went up. That's the reason I don't parachute because I'm not going down. I'm going up. And Jesus just began to go up. As he was going up, it's better than any drama you could ever do. As he was going up, he was talking to them. And the Bible says he went up into a cloud. Clouds in the scripture are significant. Amen. It's a covering. It's security. It's a sign of abundance. There's a lot of things there. And so he went up into the cloud, and he said, and he said if, if you're watching me, the same way I go up is the same way I'm coming down. So one day the Scripture says the trump is going to sound. Amen. You think this is loud. A trump of God. Trumpets are very important to God. It's always a signal of what God's doing. All right? A brother trumpet in Zion. In the book of Revelation, you have all these, you have all these uh, uh, trumpets, okay? Trumpet is a horn of God. Come on, anybody, come, this is like a Wednesday night. Y'all okay with me, all right? I feel real teachy today, all right? Don't worry, some of you came for a preach. You're going to get a preach, but I feel a teach, all right? And, and, and so he, he uh, uh, the trumpet of God is going to sound. Amen. How many have ever been somewhere that you were supposed to meet somebody, maybe a family, and they weren't there, and you thought the rapture took place and you missed it? Any, anybody ever come home from school and your mom and dad was gone, and you thought they went and you were still there? Oh, yeah, I've had it happen to me twice. Amen. Amen. Yeah, one time I was in college, and, he, and, and I was the last one there. Everybody else was gone, and, and uh, it was at the end of the semester. You know, everybody, everybody was completely gone. And, and I, I was in, in the dorm room. The dorm rooms had to be emptied. I was just laying there on the mattress. Everything had to be out of there. But I, my job was to secure that dorm, and, and everybody was out of there. And, and there, was a, there was a, I didn't know what had happened, but there was a great big boom. I mean, it was a loud boom. It was, it was, it was I'll tell you in a minute what it was. But it was incredibly loud, and I looked out, and I saw fire. 
Uh, Bill Smiley, I saw fire, all right? And I'm like, what in the world? And so I opened up the, I opened up the window because I actually thought it was the rapture. And I thought I was going to help the Lord. I was going to get in the window. And I thought I would see people going up. And I didn't see anybody going up. I thought, oh, my God, I for, forgive me of all my sin. Forgive me of all, you know, quickly. And what had happened is lightning had struck the, a wooden building, the old gym right there, and it was on fire, amen? But, but it scared me. Is anybody with me on this? This was before cell phones. One time I came home in high school. My mom and dad were supposed to be home because we were going on a trip. And the cars were all in the driveway, but nobody was home. The dog was there, but nobody was home. The doors were unlocked, but nobody was home. I began to look around. I knew my little brother was full of the devil, so I knew he'd be there. And I looked around, and he was gone. I said, my God, my God, I'm about to live through the tribulation. Amen. As a high school student, I rededicated my life to Jesus. Anybody been there and done that? Wave your hand at me and give a big hallelujah. So we talk about the coming of the Lord. It's going to be a rapture. A movie can't do this. There's going to be trumps going to sound. And all of us who are alive, which remain, like right now, we're going to begin to go up court just like Jesus did. We're going to start raising up just like this. Amen. Like you jumping off the fort behind your house, but you're going to go up and not down. All right? And, you were, and, and, and as we're doing that, I took, this morning I was telling my family about my great, great, grandfather who was on the trail of tears and how he came into McCurtain County, Oklahoma in the 1880s and they homesteaded there. And the nine pecan trees that are on our farm right now were there then and they're still there now. So they're over 120 something years old. Amen. And how my great, I, I began to talk about all that property and my land. I told, and I told my kids, I'm going to rig it so you can never sell it. All right, but I got some ancestors down there that even though they were Choctaw Indians, they were Pentecostal believers. Amen. They didn't just get out and do a little war dance. They did a Holy Ghost dance. Amen. And they knew what that was handed in our family. They know I've got some, I've got some Germans buried in, 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 in my family in a cemetery. It's called Sink Cemetery. What a name for that. But we got some Holy Ghost believers buried in Indiana, some Germans. When that trumpet sounds, amen, Mamaw and Pa are going to get up with me, and we're going to be joined in the air, and we're going to leave. Amen. Is anybody with me on this? Now, back to my point. Some people argue, is that going to be before the tribulation or in the middle of the tribulation or after? It, 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 you know, and we're not going to get into all that today. But the focus ought to be is more whether you're mid-trib or pre-trib is that you are post-resurrection. That means you are to live in all the power that God has given to every one of us. Amen. So we are living in the day of resurrection results. Everybody lift your right hand. Come on, lift it up right now. Say the day of resurrection results. That means you've got all power over the enemy. All right, now, now watch. It's going to get really good here, okay? And so what, what really happened, let, let, me, let me tell you one other thing. Is this, was just, this is just it's so important to me. Um, I mean, so many people are concerned about who I am in Christ and this sort of thing. One of the reasons why... That and I may be doing more of this Wednesday night. But one of the reasons why you're going to be joined up with him and you're going to be like him. A lot of religions believe you're, you're born, you know, a certain way. Or you came from a cricket. You're going to go back to a cricket. Well, I want you to see something. They got the wrong C. <clears throat> Before I was born in the flesh, I was in Christ. And so now I live in the flesh like he lived in the flesh. But I'm, if I die here, I'm going to be raised with him, and I'm going to be in Christ forever. I want you to see that, all right? So that, that's part of the power of the resurrection result. We won't get so much into that today. But the second thing I want you to see is not only are you living post-resurrection, but number two, it is very important for you, is that now you are to receive that power from on high. Now, I've got a page of notes that I'm not going to get into today, but a lot of people are trying to get power from being high. 
Okay, I got a whole page of notes on that, but I'm, I'm not going to give that to you today, all right? But everybody's tried to get high if it's under, uh, if it's, if it's, if it's, uh, years ago when I was a kid, we used to have models, uh, little model cars, BR, we'd put together, and, and they had glue with it. Well, well, they began to limit the glue because people were sniffing the glue. All right? I mean, I mean, listen, listen, friends, you, 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 you got to be, you got to be bored and desperate. To take, a, to take a tube of glue and stick it up the left side of your nostril. It's a lot easier just to go hallelujah. Now I won't get into all that, all right? It's a lot, it's a lot cheaper too. And, and, and so whatever you've used to get free of feeling the responsibility of the earth. All you need is redemption. Cast all your care on him. Amen. See, Luke, the 24th chapter, verse 49, Jesus said, go and wait till you receive power from on high. So number one, you're living post-resurrection. Number two, now is your time to live with power from on high. Now, I don't know where you're at in that. But that's going to be your choice to decide today. Now then, let's just, let's just go real quick to, to Luke 5, and um, I'll get into some of this. Luke 5, the first, Luke 5, the first 11 verses. So it was as the multitude um, pressed him to hear the word of God, uh, Jesus stood by the lake, and he saw two boats, verse 2, standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and he asked him, to put it out from the land. He sat down, and he taught the multitudes from the boat. So you guys got the picture, you're on the lake, got a boat, Jesus gets in it, he actually sits down and begins to talk to them. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, he didn't ask him, but he spoke to him, and he said this. He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, I don't know how much time I'll get into this, but I want you to see this, is... He didn't tell them, let's go fishing and see if we catch anything. Right here, he releases the word. Now watch it, okay? He says, launch your nets for a catch. How many believe your harvest is already there? 30% of you. We're going to do a lot of work today. Verse 5, Simon answered and said to him, Master, now look at this. He's not talking back. I don't believe he's talking back. I believe he's explaining his situation. And he says, we have toiled all night. In other words, when you're worn out, you just tend to say, when your faith is fatigued, you tend to say, it's not going to work anymore. In other words, what happened here, his faith is a little bit fatigued. And so he says this, he says, "Um, I wish I had more time today, but anyway. And he said, we toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, in other words, but because you say it, at your word, that's very important because he has said the word. I will let down the net. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners. In other words, there was so much harvest, they couldn't contain it all. How many are ready for so much harvest you can't personally hold it all? About the same 30%. Okay. And, and he called in the help. Here's what I believe is going to happen. I won't have time to get back to this. I believe that God is going to bless this ministry. And that means he's going to bless you. In such a manner to be end time distributors that we're going to have to link with other ministries and just give to them liberally and help ministries all over the earth. I, I want to put something out for you because you're going to see where I'm going with this. Okay. Is I don't believe that God's raising us up to be a church that's going to hold 60, 100 million in reservoir. I believe we ought to be a distribution center. It may, we be, may, it may well be we don't hold anything in reservoir. Amen. Because he is the God that shall always supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. I could talk a lot more about that later. Anyway, so it goes on to say this. Signal they came together. They began. It says this. 
that they came and they filled the boat so much they began to sink. I believe the current reservoir you have, I'm prophesying right now, is not going to be able to hold everything God's going to do in your life. Amen. I, I could give you a lot of reasons, but I'm not God. I, I, I believe that building burned because God's got a plan. Three of you. All I need is two or three. I believe God's got a plan. I don't believe it surprised God that day. I don't, I don't believe when the smoke alarms went off, God was surprised. I don't believe those smoke alarms woke him, woke him up like it woke me up. I believe he already knew. I believe he knew you'd be here today. When Simon Peter saw it, fell down at Jesus saying, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astonished. In other words, you're about to be astonished. I said, you're going to be astonished. Everybody wants to be astonished. Your mouth hanging open at what God's doing. Raise your hand and say, I receive that. All right? And, and he said, the catch of fish were taken. So they were all there. Uh, verse 19, uh, Jesus said, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Verse 11, so when they had brought their boats to, to land, this is the most significant part of the whole passage. It says, they forsook all and followed him. So the third point I want to give you today is launch out into the deep. Now, the Spirit of God spoke to, that, to, to me that very clearly when I was asking God for strategy about what to do. God, you, you've given us this facility. Uh, the other one's not there. And a lot of times in ministries, we, we put our strategies, we, we do, in properties. That seems to be the earth thing to do. But God, if you'll notice something, and I'm going to shake some of your, your theology on this today. God does not put the structure of his blessings, he does not limit them to buildings on this earth. He doesn't limit your blessings to your property. He is not going to limit his blessings. He will never, ever limit his blessings to that property on Highway 65. He's put us on a hill for a reason and for a season. Yeah, he's put us in the middle of town for a reason. Now, I want you to see something. I'm going to say some things, that, and, and I'll try to hurry this. But one day, I, I walked over the property that is across the street here when it was a field. I drove over that property in an old Plymouth Valari station wagon. Anybody, any old timers here know what a Plymouth Valari station wagon is? I drove over that property with our brother who's going on to be with Jesus, Brother Robert L. Ott, and he said, I would love for you to put a church right here. But he wouldn't negotiate on the $200,000 an acre. And that's before rents, nothing, absolutely was over here. Absolutely nothing. This facility was not here. All right? And I said... Brother Bob, I loved him. I said, Brother Bob, I love that, but unless you give it to us, we're not buying this. And, it, and it's interesting to me, I thought about that last night when we were unloading in here. I had a desire to build a church over there, but here we are worshiping across the street right in the middle of town. Now, I don't think it's insignificant what God is doing. Now the Spirit of God began to tell me to launch out into the deep. And I, and I began to ask God for strategy. God, what do you want me to do next? And the Lord said to me, you didn't start this. And he spoke to me again, you've been toiling. And how to keep people happy in the church. Yeah. Some people... And I'm, 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 I'm just going. I'm going to just flat out there say it today. All right? Is you, you, you've had, you, you've had a, a, a number of people don't like the way you do things, or say. But I know your heart. You've loved them. You love them now. You pray for every member of their family. But you've tried your best to please them. And here's what God told me. All right? I, I shouldn't tell you some of this. It's in my journal. God told me I can't please them. How do you expect to please them? The Spirit of God spoke to me and says, I've tried to bless them, but they won't do what I've asked them. And if I can't bless them, how do you think you're going to keep them in 
in a church. The Lord told me, I've been trying to get through to you, and you've got an open heart with seeking me, but the strategy is not complicated. The stra- and I love you, and I want to thank you all for this. Strategy is not in the YouTube channel. Strategy is not in a screen. The strategy is not in all the, and I like all this stuff, but the strategy is if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He told me you quit toiling what it's going to look like. You quit toiling what it's going to sound like. And you just lift me up and I'll be the one who'll cause the lame to walk. I'll be the one who'll baptize those children. He said, all I want you to do is put your net down for a catch. Put your net now. I'm 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 gonna really hurry. I'm gonna do my best to hurry. All right. I'm gonna do my best today, Rance. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. But the Lord was saying to me, I want you to leave all of your reliances, your limitations of reliances. I've given you knowledge but I've given you a greater wisdom to follow me. Wisdom says I'll follow you and not my knowledge. He says, because I want you to leave all of your reliances and follow me in the spirit realm because the spirit realm is where the deep things are. Okay, so I'm going to teach you with this just a little bit here, all right? Because he says, I want to take you into the unlimited realm. Because, because he says here in verse 4, he says, when he says, put, your, put down for a catch, the promise is that your victory is secure. It's all secure. Now, now the question would be, now this is how my mind works. My question would be, now if you knew the lake where they fish, and I, I could get you a picture and all that. But if you knew the lake where they fished, I, I believe, I, now I don't know I wasn't there, but it would seem to me they were able to fish the entire lake that night. It's not so big that they missed an area. So either they missed the area and the fish moved, or they did fish it all night and the fish were not there. Now, you, you, you can do it how you want to when you're preaching, but I'm preaching today. And since it doesn't say, I believe they fished all night and they told in their own strategies, in their own knowledges, and it wasn't there. But I believe that when Jesus said, I believe this, I believe that when he said, put, while he was still in the boat, and he told them, let's put out your nets for a catch, I believe those fish came right then because he is the word and he brought them right then and he brought them together. Amen. And so here's what I believe. I believe that when the building burned, amen, and we've been toiling to make a payment or whatever, and I know we need to build a youth center, and I know we need a children's center because the children don't want to leave in their ranch, amen. They want, they want something like that when we go back in a couple months, amen. And so what I believe, I believe his word is going Going forth, amen. And he knows where that one is and that one is. And he knows how to gather the fish together so much that when you go back, there won't be a bucket taken. There won't be an online giving be able to handle it, amen. A YouTube channel won't be able to handle it. He knows how to get it together and will astonish. Somebody raise your hand and say, get it together in my life. How many ready for your marriage to be astonished? Come on, ready? How many ready for, for your job to give you a thousand percent raise? My 30 percent's growing as I go along here right now. Amen. Amen. Now, now watch this, all right? Oh, see, here's the deal. Because this is in the spirit, because Matthew 16, 8 to 17, 18, says, when they when asked Peter, who do you say I am? Peter says, thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, you, you didn't get that on your own. He said, you got that in the spirit. And, and so this is what he said, I'm going to show you things in the spirit. And he said, and against that, the gates of hell shall not prevail. So there's, if I had another time, I would show you that, that that's the unlimited realm. 
We've been talking about the, that's the unlimited realm. Let me show you something else where the unlimited realm is. It's 1 Corinthians. I probably gave you this scripture. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 9. This is one of my favorite. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor entered the heart of any man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10. But these things are revealed. Now watch this. This is really good. Do we have it up here? But look at But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Watch this. For God searches all things. Yes, what? The deep things. I want to put before you, if you'll put the deep things in Luke 5 together with the deep things through here, that God is telling you to launch your net. He's not telling you today to go out here to Lake Conway and throw a net in the water. He's telling you to launch your spiritual net into the deep things of the Spirit. And if you do that, now watch this, it's already there. I remember years ago when the kids used to watch these uh, videos, they were raising up, I think they were like uh, Sesame Street or something or other, and, and I, I can't remember the guys' names, uh, but it was like uh, uh, Elmo or somebody, I can't remember who they were, uh, y'all would know more, but, but anyway, they would go fishing, and they'd get in the boat, here fishy, fishy, here fishy, fishy, all right, but, but so, so, he, you don't have to do that, you, you, don't, you, you don't have to say, God, I worship, oh, c- come on, miracle, come on, miracle, no, if you just get in the spirit, the things are already there. The financial miracle you need is already there. The next job you think you need is already there. How many hearing me on this? I mean, you don't have to talk God into a miracle. It's already there. All you've got to do is by faith, and I'll tell you how to do that on Wednesday night, is by faith put that down in the deep things of God, and he'll blow your mind. Eye hasn't seen it, ear hasn't heard it, nor have entered the heart of man. Amen. I begin to think about this. Begin to think about this the other day. You, you know, Matt, about you guys baptizing people. Wouldn't it be great to see so many people, so many Chi Alpha students getting baptized? The whole pond was full of them getting baptized. Amen. Give God praise for what He's going to do in your life. Now, watch this. I've got to end. I've got to end, but because, but, but so, see, here's what I feel. A lot of people have asked me this: Are we going to put that building back the way it was? Who cares? Now, 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 I'm going to say something to you. Now, carpet, yes, we're going to have carpet. Yes, we're going to have chairs. We're going to have good chairs. We're going to have better lighting. Okay. But may we not, now here's the prophetic vision part. May we not, during this season, look to go back. May we not be in a holding pattern. Where we say, we're just here till we get the building done. No, God has already led us to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. We're in a great place with God. And I want you to know as the pastor, as the leader of this congregation, I am, my expectation is not looking for when the beams get done. I'm on God's schedule. So for some people to say, well, are they behind? They can't possibly be behind because we're in God's time. Come on, somebody say with me right now. Say, we can't possibly be behind because we're in God's time. Now raise your right hand. Say, I can't possibly be behind because I'm in God's time. When those beams get here, when they're supposed to get here. But right now, the presence of God is here. The presence of God is not waiting on a wood beam because he was on a wood beam one day and he's not going back to another wood beam. Hallelujah. Oh, I can see. I'm I'm not going to get, I'm not waiting to get back to a new platform. I'm not waiting to get back to there right now. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you what God got us out of, we're never going back to. Now, now, now listen. Now, I got to get this out real quick. Y'all sit down for a minute, please. It's, It's not that we were in a bad place. If you got me alone, and you made me say some things that I don't really want to say it's going to be recorded right now anyway. The reason they can't find why that burn, that building burned. Y'all going to call me crazy. I think the sacrifice was so great. I think y'all burned it. 
I think y'all burned it. Now, I could go on. I, I know I could talk about aesthetics. And I could talk about it. I could talk about it. But, but here's the deal. God took us out of a place of comfort. And we're not going back. I don't want you to look forward to getting back into your same chair. Yeah. I don't want you looking forward to getting back in, in, into your same parking place. We're going to have a new rule. You cannot park in the same place. I, I don't want you to look going back to the same feel. Because he's God right now. I, I got to hurry here, all right? How many with me on this, all right? Yeah, because right now we're, yeah, we are going to be marked because we're people of the fire. Because Matthew 3, 11, uh, John the Baptist said, there's one coming after me who will baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. We've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, now we're baptized with fire. I think what the Lord is trying to tell us, friends, is that you are living post-resurrection, so you are empowered right now. So now you go. I am in you, I'm not in a tomb. I'm in the temple I rebuilt in three days. And that temple is you. It's not a building. We are not looking. We're going to go back to the building. But we're not looking to wait and see what's going to happen. We are not in a holding pattern. Hallelujah. We're in a hallelujah pattern. So here, I, I got a lot more, but I want to end with this. In every one of your lives, may your dreams never be bigger. May, may your memories never be bigger than your dreams. I'm going to say that again. May your memories never be bigger than your dreams. Amen. I'm going to say that again. May your memories never be bigger than your dreams. Patty and I got a lot of memories. We talk about, she pulls out the pictures. We talk about the kids. We talk about this. And I talk about places. And we, we do that sort of thing. And I can tell you faith stories. But may they be stories that build your faith. Not stories that I want to go back that way. Amen. I love hearing the stories of how families got together under those lanterns, but I prefer hitting the light switch. I don't mind hearing the stories how they went to the outhouse and there was a chicken. I like going into the restroom, turn on the light, and the exhaust fan. Can I have an amen? There's somebody. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Can I have a hallelujah? All right. I don't want to go back to the way it was. Let me tell you something that's about to happen. You know that beam that burned up there, hallelujah, that beam that burned? I'd ask a couple of men to, to build some altars. I, I wanted some altars at the sanctuary. But what we're going we're, what we're to attempt to do, Ben Andrews came up with this idea. We're going to save a part of that beam that was burned, and we're going to make an altar out of it. The only memory you're going to have is an altar that's been made by fire. Hallelujah. It's going to be, but I'm going to tell you, our dreams are bigger than our memories. It's our day to go ahead and do everything we're supposed to do in Chi Alpha, in kids' ministries, and in youth ministries. It's not our day to take a spiritual lazy boy. It's our day to say, I may have been out all night, and I'm tired, and I'm fatigued. I didn't catch anything, but because you say so, I'm going to launch out into the deep things of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray like I never prayed. I'm going to believe like I never believed. It's our day. I'll quit. I got, I got seven minutes. I'm going to say this part. I got, I got a lot more there. All right. Is, uh, my question to God was this. I want to know where the deep is. Y'all don't talk to God like that? God tells you, launch out in the deep. And I'll end with this part. And we'll finish the rest later. I just asked the Lord, where is the deep? I want to know where the deep is. And the Spirit of God told me this. He said, the Holy Spirit will lead you where the deep is. Ooh, hallelujah. There's some things I know about the deep, all right? Number one, I know the deep is over my head. Yeah. Y'all not with me right now. Oh, yeah, if, if I had seven more minutes, Rance, but I don't. If I had a little bit, the, the deep is over my head. Somebody say what God's doing is over my head. I mean, for all of you that feel like that you want to intellectually figure out God before you believe, He's smarter than you. 
You wouldn't be able to think if he, he wasn't in you. Amen. He gave you the power to think. Amen. Deep is over my head. There are things in the deep that, that I, I really don't know what's there. And, and the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, all, all you need to do is, is delight yourself in me. And I'll take you to the deep waters. How many ready to go in the deep? Come on, how many ready for your family to go in the deep? Let me see your hand. Come on, raise it up by faith. How many ready to go some of those places? Ready for your marriage, your family life, your relationship, your businesses? You ready for God to do things like you've never seen before? I think today, right now, right this moment, first of all, because you know what I'm doing. We still don't know what, what the whole cost is going to be on, on, on repairing all that. I'm not the insurance company worry about that. For long, they'll, they'll, they'll shoot me a number, though, and, and I'll know what it is. But I'm believing during this time we'll have seven times greater than that. So here's what I'm believing then. Here's, here's how that works. I'm believing that over your current income right now that you will increase at an accelerated pace. Some of you are already receiving it right now. Jesus, I'm sending the net out right now. I'm sending the word out right now. You will increase seven times. Are you ready for this? I'm going to put a name on it. Seven times in the next three months. Now you can do one or two things right now. You, you, can, ju- you can just you can say, I claim that. I know for you, I don't know about I don't know about you, but it's for Patty and I in our house right now. I claim that in Jesus' name. The issues we've got to deal with financially right now, I claim that in Jesus. I claim, Patty, you'll be seven times healthier than what you are right now. Amen. I claim that I'll be seven times better looking than what I am right now for you. Amen. 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 I, I claim, hey, praise God. She's feeling better already. Amen. How how many believe the health of your family will be seven times greater? How many believe you'll be seven times happier? Come on, a couple of you are going to believe this. Amen. You've got to claim that. You've got to claim that. It's yours, but you've got to say, that's mine. That's my boat. That's my net, and you're my Lord, and I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to claim that. Everybody stand if you would, please. I'm going to make this your altar right now where you're at. i got so much more I'd like to do. Would you say with me right now, say, I'm not looking back. back. Now, you didn't say it like you believe it. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, say it. Say, I'm not looking back. I'm not looking back. I want you to know something. I did not, we did not save one of those chairs out of the auditorium as a souvenir. I'm not looking back. Amen. New. Everybody say new right now. In other words, you're not looking for a blessing of God now to match something that happened previous in your life. You want your dreams bigger than your memories. There are many of you need miracles like that. There's a lot more I can say. There's so much more. So the deal is you just simply got to believe God for more. Without closing your eyes and look, without closing your eyes and all that sort of thing, how many will raise your hand right now and say, Pastor, I need to believe God for more. Let me see your hand right now. I can just lift it up. Hallelujah. Some of you, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to leave the old. You've got to leave it. You've got to leave it. Matt, I, is, where, is where, really where I wanted to stay. I never got there. It says they left. Now watch this. After they caught the most fish they had ever caught, they left it all and followed him. What? I do have to quit. You've got to come back Wednesday night. Because here's what we would normally do in our own strategies. Oh, God, you just blessed me. Let me give you an example. I'm believing God for 60 million. Someone says, well, if God gives you 60 million, you better save back some of it. I'm going to give it all. Because this scripture says, they did not then start and expand their fishing business. 
What we would probably do, I mean, we, no, I'm just, generically. What humankind would normally do, we found a new way of fishing. We've got the secret. We found the honey hole in the lake. It doesn't say they sold their boats, Charlie. It, it, it says they left them. They left them. I don't believe, it doesn't say anywhere that they, they, they gave them away. They just left them. They left everything they knew, everything they invested in, and they followed him. Why was it? Because they saw what his word could do. If you ever believe and see the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and now was in a tomb, and the tomb is empty, and he resides alive forevermore inside of you. If you ever see what that word can do, amen, you'll never rely on anything you've ever done. You'll leave everything and follow him. Anybody ready to give Jesus your whole life? Raise your hand right now. Come on, my time is up. You've got to work quick. I'm not going to tell you a story talk you into it. I'm willing to follow him with everything I've got. Let me see your hand. Come on, you either are or you're not. You know what I found out with this diesel that I drive? Is that you better have the right stuff in there. Because if you get a mixture of something in there, that joker is going to sputter. And I found out you cannot mix light and darkness. You'll sputter. You'll sputter. Amen. It's not worth it, guys. You're only here for a few years. You're with Him for an eternity. And you're going to get everything you've ever toiled for. So I ask this final question. How many of you will say right now, I'm leaving everything to follow Him? Come on, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Amen. Wave, wave it at me if you received anything today. Wave it at me if I helped anybody today. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You got one hand up. You might as well go ahead and lift up the other one. You're feeling pretty good right now. Come on, get the Baptist off of you and raise up both hands right now. All right. Hallelujah. Father, I believe that right now that you are entering these. A childlike faith. You're going to lift them up. And this week, their nets are going to begin to fill up. They're going to feel a tug on their nets like they never felt before. They're going to feel something in their mind they never felt before. They're going to think like they never thought. They're going to feel something in their spirit they've never felt before. They're going, to, they're going to feel something of an anointing like they've never felt before. Because you're going to do it. I also pray that you'll touch every emotion. The anointing we sang about earlier, everyone will feel and know that anointing. We leave everything and follow you. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. 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 Give God praise. Come on, give Him praise. Come on, give Him big praise. Come on, big praise. Hallelujah. 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 So here I end you with this. Just tell this one part. So in other words, during this season, God's going to do new things in your life. Pay attention to them. Be ready to do new things. Not the ways you've always done them. Because God is going to take you to a new realm from glory to glory. Amen. This is exciting. This is exciting. Amen. Give him praise one more time and God bless you all. God bless you all. Have a great day. Tuesday night, ladies, Bible study. Wednesday night. Y'all, everybody come Wednesday night at 630, all right? We're going to have a great time. I'll finish part of this. God bless you. Have a great day.